the first one, I think the most important one is journal article and everything associated with journal article. So paper, when we really hear about paper, we basically mean journal article, but not necessarily it's always true. So journal article can include review paper, original research article, sometimes methods paper. I will tell you what these things are, don't worry. Case studies, letter to the editor of the journal, response to the letter to the editor of the journal, expert insights and abstracts. This is a journal article. The journal name is Renewable and Sustainable Energy Reviews. And in there, we submitted an article that is called Estimating the Unit Production Cost, Carbon Intensity, and Carbon Abatement Cost of Electricity Generation from Bioenergy Feedstocks in Georgia, United States. You don't have to understand what this means just understand that this section is the title of the journal article these are the authors uh, i am one of them every journal article follows this formula so remember i talked about formulas uh, you will have that formula at first we start with an abstract and the abstract is a summary of your work you maybe give them one line of why this study was important and then you talk about what you did, where you did, maybe one line about how you did it. But obviously we know one line is not enough, but this is an abstract, this is a summary. And then you will give your major results. For example, in my paper, the major pieces of results are that I found there is one thing that is less expensive than the others and it emits less carbon dioxide than the others. That's what, what I was trying to find out. And then I told them maybe a recommendation based on the results I found. What does that result mean? So that's the first section, abstract. Ironically, that's the last thing we write. You probably guessed why, because if you don't have your other sections ready, you probably cannot write this section because this section is a summary of all the subsequent sections. Then we have some keywords. What this paper is really about. This paper was about biopower. That means electricity from biomass. This paper is about renewable energy. It's about economic analysis. It's about life cycle assessment. Then we go to the introduction section. In introduction, we talk about why this particular research is important. What's the background? So the background of my research was, hey, we are using a lot of energy. And in the process of generating that energy, we are emitting a lot of carbon dioxide. And we need to stop that. So this is where I'm saying that, hey, see, the United States consumed a lot of energy in 2018 and it emitted a lot of carbon dioxide. My study area was Georgia. That's my state. I said that this is the third largest electricity generating state. And that means we are creating a lot of electricity and we are emitting a lot of carbon as well. But the clean power plan says that we have to reduce the dependence on coal. Coal is very, very carbon intensive. And how can we replace coal? Maybe we can replace that with biomass because Georgia has a lot of forest land, cropland, and pasture land. Pasture land means grassland. So maybe we can get those biomass, those trees, those crops and maybe we can replace coal maybe we can burn wood right and generate energy maybe we can do that and then there's a section called literature review what you are seeing in this window that is a literature that's a paper and i have to tell them that 
I am adding something new. I have to show them that, hey, see existing literature, they did this. They showed how much biomass is available in Georgia. What will be the environmental impact? What will be the economic impact of bioenergy? But the problem is nobody exactly did what I want to do. That's why it's research. That's why it's a PhD topic. So first section, introduction, why is important. Second section, literature review, what previously was done so that I'm showing that I am adding something new. And the third section is methodology. Now I'm going to tell you how I did it. First, sometimes we show them or we tell them the study area, if you have a study area. Sometimes we tell them system boundary, what we, uh, what we did, where we did it. Then we tell them where our data is coming from. So there, there is a section called data. After we tell them uh, where the data source is, I am going elaborately how exactly I performed my research because this is very important. People or maybe other researchers who are reading your paper, they should be able to replicate your study. That means they should be able to do the same thing that you did based on what you wrote here. So in the second lecture, in the second session, I will talk a lot more about all of these sections. I'm just giving you an overview today. So one introduction, two literature review, three methodology, and then four results and discussions. What you found and what does that mean? You have to discuss it. And after you have given all those cool looking graphs and tables, your results, you will give them a summary again in the conclusion section. That's the fifth section. Literally putting your knowledge into perspective, how people can use your results, why is that important, what is the major finding of this study. So that is how a journal article is written. Now, there's a lot there. Uh, sometimes the method section gets so big that the journal tells you that, hey, why don't you uh, separate the method section and write a very different paper, which is called the methods paper. Sometimes somebody, not you, so somebody who read that paper says to the editor that, hey, I think this section here is not correct or maybe this section requires some editing. So that is called a letter to the editor and those are published in the journal as well then you can respond to it and you can say that no actually what you're thinking is wrong my thing is correct or maybe my thing is wrong uh, thank you for that that is called a response to the letter to the editor so when I really say journal article all these things are included and obviously the review paper review paper is a summary of all the research or studies done not by you maybe by you or somebody else but you are accumulating them in one article that is called a review paper and sometimes that is even more difficult than writing an original research article that i just showed you this is an example of a review paper the journal is called annual review of resource economics here again this is the title and these are the authors here we show where the authors are from and then again we have that keyword we have abstract then we have introduction and something interesting will happen now so remember the next section was called literature review here we don't seem to have that because the whole paper is a review and that's why we basically go directly into our findings what we found reviewing all those studies all those articles there is another type of academic writing which is called conference proceedings there are conferences going on all over the world where the researchers gather and they share their findings with each other sometimes those research that has not been published into a journal yet so maybe you present it to them and get their feedback to improve your research. So that's why conferences are important. Sometimes some conference 
wants you to give them a fully written paper. The conference people, they will publish it in something they call the proceedings. So you can also do your academic writing in conference proceedings. What you're seeing here is that kind of conference proceedings. The conference was called Shinshu University International Symposium. Oh wow, that was the 2010. That was the first time I saw my name in an academic writing. And there's the title, there is the authors, and then this is the abstract. Even though it does not say it's an abstract, it is an abstract. We have the keywords again, and then we have introduction, and then we go into methodology. Some people call it materials and methods. Some people call it methods. Some people call it methodology. They all try to mean the same thing. So, so far, the surprising thing is, it looks like original research paper, review paper, and conference proceedings, they all look the same. They are, mostly. Then we go into the results section. There is a very, very important section in all of the things that I just showed you. So let me go to the original research paper. After the conclusion, you will see that there is a section called references. It means all those studies that you have mentioned in your research article, you have listed them here. For example, let's say this number one, the source is EIA, which is the Energy Information Administration. Obviously, I have used it for some information, which I did not create, but I have used it in my research paper. The research paper is still called original research article. The fact that I have used someone else's information does not make it non-original. As long as I mention what information I have used and I have listed them in my reference section. So see, this information that United States have used that much energy came from that source, number one source. Sometimes you will have a different looking reference. For example, here I say EPA 2018. That is also a source of information. And if you want to know if I have listed that in my reference, here I have mentioned that source, EPA 2018. This is crucial in science. And this is crucial in many types of academic writing. Otherwise, what it will be called is plagiarism. That basically means you are copying without permission or without mentioning the source. And plagiarism is a huge crime in academic writing. So far, we have talked about original research article, review paper, conference proceedings. And we also talked about letter to the editors and others. The other important type of academic writing is thesis and dissertation. I already talked a little bit about it, but let me say that again. For masters, you have to write a thesis. For PhD, you have to write a dissertation. And without them, you probably cannot graduate. Yes, for masters, you can graduate without a thesis. That's called a non-thesis program. But most of the time, you probably want the thesis option. This is my thesis for University of Georgia. It starts like this. There is a title, and then who wrote it? And I told you that always there is a supervisor who supervises the thesis or the dissertation. This thesis was done under the direction of Dr. Gregory Colson. And then we have an abstract. Then we have keywords. We have some abbreviations because I want to tell people when I write C, I mean carbon. When I write BTU, I mean British thermal units or so on. What is this? This is a thesis submitted to the graduate faculty of the University of Georgia in partial fulfillment of the requirements for the degree Master of Science. So I wrote this for my Master of Science degree and without this, I could not have graduated. And then you write where you are. I was in Athens, Georgia in 2020, last year. And I say that this is my paper all rights reserved. This is a structure given by the university that you have to follow this structure. So don't worry about that if, if it seems overwhelming. And then I write my dedication page. It's a, basically a book. You write your dedication, you write your acknowledgments, and then you have a content, table of contents. This is very good to show you the structure. So again, I start with my introduction. I go to my methodology. 
I show you my results and discussion, I write my conclusion, and I write my reference. Most of the time, that is how a thesis will look like. This is my dissertation for my PhD. There's the title, there's my name, and it looks exactly the same. It's just, it says Doctor of Philosophy instead of Master of Science. PhD is Doctor of Philosophy, if you are wondering, some of you. Then we do all those same things, and then go to my dedication page, my acknowledgement page. I wrote two pages of acknowledgement because a PhD does not happen without the help of a lot of people. And then I go to my contents. At first, there's a list of tables, all the tables that I have in my dissertation list of figures, that means graphs, pictures, and then my chapter one, there is a general introduction and a general literature review. The reason I say general, it's because there are other full length papers in the dissertation. And all those chapters have those same things, abstracts, introduction, literature review, methodology, result in discussion, and conclusion. I combined all those three chapters and wrote and a general introduction and a general literature review. And at the end, I wrote a general conclusion. So this is what is called a manuscript style dissertation. I hope that was clear. The next one is a project report, and this is the project report that I wrote. It looks a little bit different, but trust me, the sections are mostly the same. Here, this is the title page. I wrote the title, and a project report basically says what the project is, who is the project from, who prepared uh, this project, and where we are submitting that project. So maybe some service holders uh, will need this kind of a structure. And then you have your contents. This is, this is good to show you the structure. I again have an introduction. I have the methodology description of my study site. And since this was an inception report, that means we are just starting. We're trying to tell people what we are trying to do. We don't have any results yet. We tell them what the expected results are what's our work schedule and the conclusion which is sometimes called concluding remarks then we also have references this is the title page you write a project title name of the preparer designation who you are organization name month year and then you write your project name uh, the project name is the complicated project I thought I would be able to do, but I'm struggling. And the project manager is me, myself, and I, that unfortunate person. Then sometimes there's a project code, uh, report date, overall project status. You tick if it's completed, if it's on track, or if it's at risk. Then you do a summary of the project report, which is, again, an abstract. And then you have the detailed project report. You write about your schedule. What is the status of your schedule? How far have you come? Is this where you want it to be? Resources. Uh, what is the status of your resource, such as money, people, equipment? Details of your budget. Are you still within the budget? Quality. Yeah, let's say that you are in schedule. However, how is the quality of the project? Team performance. Is someone doing really good? Is someone maybe not up to the mark? And then some uncertainty, <clears throat> potential pitfalls, potential risk situations, and how you're going to handle that. And then anything else that is important. After that, you have to write a timeline. So I don't really have a timeline for a project. So I wrote my PhD timeline in there. So that's a timeline. You also need to have that. And then in appendix, if you want to have anything else, um, this is a book chapter. That's our next step of academic writing. Again, it's the same thing. Just notice that we don't have an abstract in the beginning. Sometimes we don't uh, in book chapters. Sometimes you have an introduction and you don't really have a literature review section. Most journals these days 
are going for this strategy that in the introduction you present the topic you tell me what the other literature has done and then you'd go directly into the methods I can show you many examples in the later lectures again a reference section it is very very important your paper will not be published without it I think there are a lot of people who will be interested in how to write a research proposal because it's important it's another part of academic writing if you want to have some money from somebody else you have to write a research proposal show them that okay this is how I'm going to do the research but I need money so there is a template for that in the screen right now you are seeing a template so here uh, there is a cover page all the information about the applicants and then what the project is why is it important what the finances of the project is how much money you are requesting what is the rationale that means why the project is important what are the risks uh, that you can foresee what's the budget the details about it and then you just keep filling it up if you want I can share this template with you and after that we come to the homework assignments and exams that is the last type of it so this is a report that I wrote and it's basically a synopsis sometimes your professor will ask you to do some summaries as homework assignments and that is exactly what this is this is from one of my courses that I took sometimes you have to write a memo so this is the structure of a memo you have to start with a date and then you have to write who you are submitting it to and then you have to write maybe your name who is submitting and then this is the subject and then you start writing that this week my lab partner some other student and I conducted this this and that and this is the result and after that maybe you have some tables and figures and something like that so that is what I called a memo and this is very important for service holders uh, you have to write a lot of memos to a lot of people so I think this this structure even though it's brief it might help so these are all the types of academic writing 